okay so this is the third video which we will discuss about icosahedral and complex symmetry okay in second video that was part 2 for introduction of virology we had covered the m protein that is matrix protein and helical symmetry okay so this is part 3 and in part 4 you will study about prions and virides okay so yeah so let's start so we had done with helical symmetry and okay so next is icosahedral symmetry okay so for this question or if you get a question on icosahedral symmetry then you have to draw these particular diagrams okay at least mention the axis that is five fold two fold three fold okay so what are these we will study now okay, so for a icosahedral symmetry let's consider an example which has solid 20 faces okay with the equilateral triangle okay so if you see the first uh, icosahedral diagram here these are the 10 triangles which you can see from the front face okay same goes back side so there are total 20 faces okay so these faces have axis okay so the first is the topmost which has five fold axis okay so all five triangles are uh, connected to a particular point right so you will see a pentagon shape green color structure there so that is a five fold axis the next is the three fold axis where three triangles are connected to their vertices correct the corners of the triangle okay so that is the three fold axis and the two fold axis is where two triangles are attached Okay, so how to remember this for drawing diagrams just consider that the five fold is on top okay top view three fold is the front view and two fold axis is the side view okay so th this may help you for drawing your diagram okay so just remember it that way so this allows the formation of closed shell with smallest number of identical subunits okay so the smallest number of identical subunits mostly is used is 60 okay you remember the identical subunits for this example as 60 subunits okay least smallest number is 60 for icosahedral symmetry okay, so the simple icosahedron capsid it is made up of 60 identical protein subunits right we had seen that first so the protein subunit is the structural unit right because we are studying the capsid so we know that the capsid is made up of capsomer and capsomer of uh, what protomers correct so they are linked so these are the subunits structural units for the capsid so interaction of all molecules with their neighbors are identical right head to help head and tail to tail sorry for my flipping tongue here so yeah head to head and tail to tail interactions are seen okay in icosahedron capsid so many of you may have a triangulation number calculation with this diagram but uh, I had not included it here but if you need that just tell me in uh, comment box you can mention it in comment box okay so I will upload separate video for triangulation number okay so for now with this example just remember that if you need to draw example for icosahedron capsid then go with T1 which is symbol to draw which has 60 identical subunits okay protein subunits and mention the 5x fold uh, sorry 5 fold axis then 3 fold axis and 2 fold axis okay then if a capsid icosahedron capsid has more than 60 subunits then what is it called so it is called quasi equivalent okay so this was proposed by Casper and Klug and uh, they stated that when a capsid contains more than 60 subunits each occupies a quasi equivalent or quasi equivalent position okay so it is also or it also has the non covalent bonding or binding properties of subunit in different structural environment okay they are similar but they are not identical Yes, the structural environment may be different but the binding is non-covalent in quasi equivalent as well yeah, so then we have a triangulation number 
So if you have virology in basics, then just remember this triangulation number this way, which I am going to explain you now. But if you actually have to calculate the triangulation number with some diagrams, then uh, mention it in comment box. I will upload a separate video for counting or calculating the triangulation number. Okay, so for basics, okay, so I will just explain it here to just get the concept clear. Okay, so the red triangle which is marked in these figures, it denotes or it represents a face or facet. Okay, so a number of facets per triangle face of a icosahedron is triangulation number. Okay. So in case of first image, you will see there are T1, which represents 60 subunits. Okay, so simple icosahedron structure is given with the lowest or smallest number of subunits used. Okay, so that is T1 is 60 subunits. Okay, so you need to mark the facet from uh, a triangular face Okay, you need to just represent that first and then count the inside structures. Okay, so here in case of T1, you will see only one that is AAA is present everywhere. Okay, in case of second image where it is written T is equal to 3, you can see there are three different subunits which are represented as A, B, C. Okay, so all these are uh, shown in a three fold axis correct then you will denote it as t is equal to three that is 180 subunits okay if you consider you will see there are uh, three structures attached to that three fold axis okay three different structures actually two triangles which are attached to get a kite like structure okay so if you count, there are three kite-like structures which are attached to that three-fold axis. Okay, so one uh, kite, it represents 60. So 60 into 3, you will get 180 subunits. Okay, so the each facet, it contains the capsid protein multimer. Correct? So the capsid has multimers. So combining several triangular facets allows the assembly of the larger phase from same structural unit. Okay? So you will get by combining the several uh, triangular facet or fab face, you will get the whole structural unit, right? So this is about the triangulation number. In third case, you will see that the red triangle which represents the face of icosahedron. There are A1, A2, sorry, A1, B1 and C1. Then there is D1, D10, D11, then B10, C10, A10 and C11, A11, B11. So there are total four triangles if you can see. Okay, there is one in between and three triangles surrounding the central tri uh, triangle. Okay, so that is what we calculate. So one triangle represents 60 subunits. So 60 into 4 is 240 subunits. Okay, at least I can say that it is clear in the third example that 60 into 4 we consider one phase or facet as 60 subunits so 60 into 4 you will get 240 subunits okay yeah so the three models or three modes of subunits packing are like say orange yellow and purple okay so in this particular example where 3 t is equal to 3 which is 180 subunits you will see there are three modes of subunits which are used in packing so one is orange, one is yellow, and one is purple. Okay. So pentamers are vertices. Okay. So hexamers are elsewhere. They are not here shown. The bonding interactions are quasi equivalent, means they are more than 60 subunits. Okay. So all engage tail to tail and head to head interactions. They all are having head to head and tail to tail interactions. Correct. So there are total 180 identical subunits as we had seen that previously. Okay. One triangle, it is considered as 60 subunits. So 60 into 3, you get 180 identical subunits. Okay. 
so shift from t1 to t4 package okay so this is given below so there is eight fold increase in volume so first is example of alpha alpha mosaic virus which has 60 subunits which is named as t1 you will see the compact uh, structure or the volume it gets increased okay so first is alpha mosaic virus second is tomato bushy stud virus which is t3 and simian virus which is t7 which has 420 subunits okay so don't need to draw the below images you cannot draw that but just give example you can write the name you can write the subunit number and you can mention the triangulation number that is t1 t3 and t7 okay so this was about icosahedral symmetry then last is complex symmetry okay so the virus which do not show either icosahedral symmetry or helical symmetry due to their complexity of structure they are referred as complex okay so the examples are pox virus and bacteriophage okay so in case of bacteriophage it is also said that it has binal symmetry which means the head is icosahedral and tail is helical okay so you cannot uh, classify it as complex sorry as icosahedral or helical so you classify it as complex one okay in case of pox virus family you will see that it also uh, do not have a structure which resembles icosahedral or helical okay so it is classified in complex okay so one which are not uh, one which cannot fit in icosahedral symmetry or helical symmetry they all goes in the complex symmetry just remember that so complex symmetry is actually simple to remember okay so the tricky part is actually the icosahedral symmetry because you need to know the triangulation number right you know need to know the subunits number of subunits used okay then helical is quite simple. okay so this was all about icosahedral symmetry and complex symmetry even i had explained basics about what the triangulation number is okay so thank you for watching this video and please like my videos share these videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel okay keep learning thank you bye bye